My name is Rebecca, and today we're going to be talking about cruciferous vegetables and dark leafy greens. Uh, but first, I just want to like, um, just state a disclaimer. I'm not a healthcare provider, and this presentation is just for educational purposes. So this shouldn't um, be used to substitute like professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. And so today we're going to discuss how cruciferous vegetables and dark leafy greens can help with fighting inflammation and managing autoimmune diseases. But first, we're going to discuss um, just like going over inflammation and understanding it and autoimmune diseases. And then after that, we'll touch on the importance of diet. And then we'll get into dark leafy greens and cruciferous vegetables and how they can help with fighting inflammation and managing autoimmune diseases. So first, like let's dive into one of the most fundamental processes like of our body's immune system, and that's inflammation. And at its core, inflammation is our body's natural defense mechanism, and it's our body's immediate response to injury or infection. So imagine it as the body's alarm system, like a call to action um, for our immune defenses when they detect an invader, um, be it a bacteria, be it bacteria, virus, or even a splinter. Now, why is inflammation crucial? It, it's all about protection and healing. So when our body senses danger, inflammation kickstarts a complex biological cascade and um, mobilizing white blood cells, immune cells, and various substances to the site of injury or infection. And this is not just a defensive maneuver to fight off invaders, but also a preparatory step for the healing process. And it ensures that nutrients and immune cells can access the affected area setting the stage for repair and recovery. And um, the key symptoms of inflammation are pain, heat, redness, and swelling. And in this light, like inflammation, it's not just a reaction, it's a necessary function for our survival. So without it, wounds wouldn't heal and infections could spread unchecked. However, it's a double-edged sword like while acute inflammation is beneficial and even vital, um, chronic inflammation can become a harbinger of further health issues, including some autoimmune diseases. Therefore, understanding inflammation's dual nature is key um, to appreciating our body's complex um, defense mechanism. And we will discuss chronic inflammation some more in um, a few moments. So um, just to just dive into understanding inflammation some more, uh, I thought we could just go over an analogy to understand how our body fights against infections and the pivotal role of immune cells. So like you can imagine your body as a grand castle like complete with like walls and, and floors and um, towers. And this, in this castle, it's a living thing as well that's constantly like under threat from invaders like viruses and bacteria. But a, our castle, it has a sophisticated defense system, primarily composed of immune cells. And you can think of these immune cells as the castle's elite guard unit, always on high alert protecting against like any threat. And among these defenders, we have the white blood cells and they're the frontline fighters against these foreign invaders. And like different types of white blood cells play unique roles in this battle. So you have like macrophages and they're like, like the knights of, like, of our realm, we could say, and they're capable of engulfing um, invaders whole. And after the battle, they also take on the role of cleaners, removing the debris and dead cells and pathogens, ensuring that our castle remains pristine. And then we have the T cells and they're like the spies of our castle and they patrol the grounds and they're vigilantly checking on our cells 
um, for any that have betrayed us by turning into traitors that are in infected by the enemy. And like their strategic intelligence like helps direct our defenses to where they're needed most. And then we got our B cells, which we can think of like as the archers, because like they release sharp arrows, which are known as antibodies. And these arrows like mark the invaders, making it easier for our knights and soldiers to target and neutralize the threat. So this coordinated defense um, ensures our castle, the body, is protected from invaders. However, when the defense system mistakenly identifies our own cells as the enemy, like launching an attack, this leads to what we call autoimmune diseases. And it's like our guards are becoming confused, seeing threats where there are none and leading to a state of chronic inflammation. So now we're gonna dive deeper into chronic inflammation. So chronic inflammation refers to a prolonged and dysregulated inflammatory response that persists even when the initial trigger, such as an infection or injury, is no longer present. And unlike the acute inflammation that acts as our body's immediate and protective response to an injury or infection, chronic inflammation is a state where inflammation becomes less of a protective shield and more of a persistent threat to our health. So like you can imagine inflammation as a fire intended to cook a meal, useful when controlled, but destructive if left unchecked. And chronic inflammation is like a fire that never goes out, just continuously causing damage. And this relentless state um, can confuse our body's defense system. And in autoimmune diseases, the immune system misled with, by the constant state of alert starts to see parts of our own body as foreign invaders. And it's as if the castle guards, after being on high alert for too long, start to mistake the castle's own citizens for enemies. And conditions such as like, rheumatoid arthritis, um, lupus, and inflammatory bowel disease are examples where this misidentification like, leads to our body attacking its own tissues. And this not only causes the symptoms we associate with these diseases um, like to appear, um, but also it can um, lead to just to damage to our tissues and our body's infrastructure and just really affect our overall well-being too. Um, so just by understanding chronic inflammation and its effects, we can just better appreciate the importance of maintaining a balanced immune response. And um, also it illustrates why managing inflammation is crucial especially for those with or at risk of autoimmune diseases. And um, just the repercussions of this sustained inflammatory response are far reaching. Like it plays a, cr a critical role in the development and progression of several diseases. So like among them, like we touched on, so, uh, so autoimmune, autoimmune diseases like lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, when the body's um, immune system mistakenly attacks its own tissues, mistaking them for harmful pathogens. But it doesn't stop there. Like chronic inflammation is also a key player in the development of heart disease, contributing to plaque, um, to plaque buildup in the arteries, which can lead to heart attacks or in strokes. And it's linked to cancer where inflammatory conditions can just foster an environment that support tumor growth and spread, and furthermore is associated with diabetes as it can affect insulin resistance and lead to type two diabetes. So just like understanding the impact of chronic inflammation underscores the importance of managing inflammation um, through various ways such as like lifestyle choices, including diet, exercise, stress reduction, 
and just to maintain our health um, to prevent disease. So just using our castle analogy again um, to understand autoimmune diseases. So like autoimmune diseases, they happen when just our, our guards, like the guards of our castle, get a bit confused and they start thinking that parts of the castle itself are the bad guys. So instead of just fighting off germs, they start attacking the castle's own walls, floors, like decorations, like thinking that they're helping, but really they're causing damage. And in autoimmune diseases, it's, it's like the spies. So like our T cells mistakenly tell the soldiers, the white blood, like the other like white blood cells and the archers, the B cells, that some part of the castle, that some parts of the castle are enemies. So the guards um, start fighting against the castle's own parts. And this can make the castle weaker and hurt in places where it shouldn't. And it's like if the doors start getting broken down or the walls start getting chipped away by friendly fire. And um, so as we've discussed, like autoimmune diseases occur when the immune system mistakenly identify, identifies the body's own cells and tissues as foreign invaders and attacks them. And research has shown uh, that T cells like are central to this process because they are responsible for distinguishing between self and non-self cells. And if T cells fail to recognize the body's own cells correctly, they can initiate an immune response against healthy tissues. Um, so so uh, again, like, so like autoimmune diseases are when the body's immune system mistakenly identifies healthy cells as foreign invaders and launch an attack. And chronic inflammation often plays a significant role in this process by perpetuating the immune response and causing ongoing damage. And in our bodies, like when the immune system attacks healthy parts by mistake, it can cause problems where we don't want them, like our joints, skin, or organs, which make us feel sick or in pain. And in addressing autoimmune conditions, Medical professionals aim not to just treat symptoms, but to retrain um, these misguided like guardians like of our castle, of our bodies. And the goal is to recalibrate the immune system's recognition, recognition mechanisms, like teaching T cells to distinguish friend from foe more accurately, and like halt the friendly fire that characterizes autoimmune diseases. So just understanding the link between chronic inflammation and autoimmune diseases sheds light on the importance of managing inflammation through lifestyle choices, including diet, to potentially reduce the risk or severity of autoimmune diseases. So foods rich in anti-inflammatory compounds, such as cruciferous vegetables and dark leafy greens, can play a crucial role in modulating the immune response and potentially reducing the risk or severity of autoimmune diseases. And the relationship between diet and autoimmune diseases is complex and multifaceted. Like it's important to understand that there's no single magic diet that cures like autoimmune conditions um, because like, yeah, we're all so different and um, but research strongly suggests that diet choices can play a major role. And like some foods like may trigger or may like worsen flares in those with existing autoimmune conditions. And furthermore, an imbalance of nutrients like, can weaken the immune system and promote chronic inflammation. So it's important to listen to your body and you can and learn like which foods might be problematic for you. For instance, research has shown that an imbalance of gut microbiome can also contribute to inflammation and immune system dysregulation. But on the other hand, um, many foods, like in particular 
like plant-based foods, like dark leafy greens, cruciferous vegetables, like fruits, possess anti-inflammatory properties that support a healthy immune system and can potentially help autoimmune um, symptoms and long-term disease progression. Um, so to start, I just wanted to include this quote by Dr. Michael Greger. Um, and um, yeah, if you're not familiar with him, I definitely recommend um, checking out his, his work. Um, he has books. Also, he has a lot of um, a lot of free resources online, like videos and also podcasts and articles. And he um, does a lot of like his focus is, a, a, is he focuses on like nutrition and how your diet, how food can just really affect your health. And this is a quote by him. And it's, um, yeah, Popeye was right about spinach. Dark green leafy vegetables are the healthiest food on the planet. As whole foods go, they offer the most nutrition per calorie. So dark leafy greens refers to a category of vegetables categorized by their dark green color and leafy texture. And they're known for their high nutrient content, including vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. And uh, dark leafy greens are nutritional powerhouses that can significantly contribute to our well-being, especially for individuals managing autoimmune conditions. Like their wealth of essential vitamins and minerals and antioxidants play a crucial role in supporting a healthy immune system and potentially reducing inflammation. And the high concentration of antioxidants helps combat free radical damage, which can contribute to chronic inflammation, a hallmark of many autoimmune conditions. So additionally, the presence of nutrients like vitamin A, C, and E, along with magnesium and fiber, may further support immune function and potentially alleviate some autoimmune symptoms. And um, furthermore, like dark leafy greens are beneficial for both bone health, um, for, or beneficial for bone health due to their calcium and vitamin K. And um, yep, so in dark leafy greens, they can also contribute to, like, to heart health by potentially lowering blood pressure and cholesterol levels. And um, additionally, the presence of vitamin A and just the antioxidants in these greens may benefit vision and potentially protect against age-related macular um, degeneration. So incorporating a variety of dark leafy greens into your diet is a simple and effective way to boost your nutrient intake and support overall health. So some examples of dark leafy greens include um, kale, spinach, Swiss chard, collard greens, mustard greens, turnip greens, arugula, we have like dandelion greens, um, like watercress, bok choy. So um, are there, there are a lot of different, there are a lot of different greens. So there's like plenty of variety in them. And they can eat in like in salads or raw or added to soups, stews, or blended in smoothies. So they're just very they're very versatile. And next, uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about cruciferous vegetables. And um, there's another Dr. Michael Greger quote about this, and he says that um, so the Iowa Women's Health Study, which has followed more than thirty five thousand women for decades found eating more broccoli, cauliflower, um, kale, and other cruciferous vegetables was associated with a lower risk of getting non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in the first place. And before going into cruciferous vegetables, I want to yeah, answer a question in the chat. So yeah, are dandelions safe out of yard? So this is a question going back to the dark leafy greens portion. And for that, um, from like I looked into this um, a bit too, and from what I've read, it's no, especially if your yard's just been treated. Um, like a lot of times, like people think of like dandelions as, as a weed. So, um, 
I think, I think it depends on, on your yard and like how your yard is being cared for or, or who's taking care of it, or if they're using like herbicides or, or something. Um, so it's something like to be aware of. I, I personally haven't tried growing them myself, but um, that's what I've, that's what I've read. It's just about a warning about just getting them like from the yard. Yeah, if anyone else has like any experience with dandelions, um, yeah, please, yeah, definitely, please feel free to share. But I think if you can grow them like in a controlled area, you can be, you can be okay. I think the main issue is just if someone's been like, if it's been treated. So cruciferous vegetables, um, they're known for their unique and slightly bitter taste. And um, oh, I think also just yeah, uh, I kind of skipped over the last slide. I just realized, uh, oh, just just another this quote by Dr. Michael Greger, just talking about a, a vegetable and cruciferous vegetables, but just like how powerful they are, and um, they're a food that we can get at the supermarket or or grow um, in our garden, and it's so it's it's really amazing how how this is like how this is available to us and just how healthy and nourishing they can be. And so cruciferous vegetables, um, like they're, they're packed with essential vitamins like C, K and folate along with fiber and key minerals. And like one of the most remarkable aspects of cruciferous vegetables is their unique group of phytonutrients, glucosinolates, and when consumed and broken down during digestion, these compounds transform into beneficial forms that may possess anti-cancer properties, making cruciferous vegetables as a valuable addition to a well-balanced diet. And furthermore, these vegetables boast antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties supporting the body's defense systems against damaging free radicals and potentially reducing chronic inflammation. And studies suggest like potential benefits of cruciferous vegetables in lowering um, cholesterol and mitigating the risk of, of heart disease. And um, something I wanted to touch too, um, I just realized I skipped over about glucosinolates. And I wanted to talk about um, sulforaphane in particular um, while talking about glucosinolates because, um, because glucosinolates are a precursor to sulforaphane. And so when we consume cruciferous vegetables, the glucosinolates, they're transformed into sulforaphane like through, through the process of digestion. And it's in this process is facilitated by an enzyme that's released when um, cruciferous vegetables are chopped or chewed or otherwise prepared. And then sulforaphane is able to act, it acts to reduce oxidative stress and inflammation, um, which are crucial factors um, in the development and progression of autoimmune diseases. And um, and then, so as we're talking to us about glucosinolates, they have like an, anti-cancer properties. And um, this just always really emphasizes just the importance of cruciferous vegetables like for our health. And also just in light of all these benefits of cruciferous vegetables, like in regulating the immune system in individuals with autoimmune diseases, it can just become a nuanced act. And cruciferous vegetables like, offer a natural pathway to achieve this balance. By modulating the immune system, they help diminish autoimmune reactions without suppressing the immune function entirely. And moreover, um, the, the fiber content in these vegetables plays a crucial role in supporting gut health. So a healthy gut microbiome is instrumental in maintaining a well-regulated immune system and preventing like unwarranted autoimmune responses. And um, now I can show you um, just some examples of cruciferous vegetables. So here we have some examples. Um, there is like overlap with dark leafy greens and cruciferous vegetables. So we have like bok choy, we have kale, 
We have cabbage and we have um, Brussels sprouts too. And um, just like dark leafy greens, they're super versatile. So um, yeah, you can add them to a lot of, like um, you can add them to a lot of different dishes. Um, for cruciferous vegetables, like in particular for um, like sulforaphane, it's really interesting in that um, basically like we don't get as much of it from cruciferous vegetables when the food is is heated a lot. So like eating cruciferous vegetables in their raw form can make um, sulforaphane more available. But actually Dr. Michael Greger talks a bit about this and about alternatives for if you're cooking your um, cruciferous vegetables, but you still want to get um, like the sulforaphane because glucosinolate needs a enzyme and that enzyme becomes like denatured. It needs an enzyme to turn to sulforaphane, but that enzyme becomes denatured during cooking. So he like recommends um, like one method he says that you can like just chop up your cruciferous vegetables and then let them sit because it's during the chopping that the enzyme gets released. So then the enzyme can turn the glucosinolates into sulforaphane. And then he's just like letting it sit for like 40 minutes or you there. And there's a study that shows this, that you can eat your cooked cruciferous vegetables like with, um, with like mustard powder on it basically just sit with another cruciferous vegetable and that way you're still able to get the enzyme. So you can even like eat like a cooked cruciferous vegetable with a little bit of like a raw cruciferous vegetable and then you get the enzyme so that you can convert the glucosinolates into sulforaphane. Um, but um, so but just like in conclusion, it's just like this is synergy between glucosinolates and sulforaphane in cruciferous vegetables that really just underscores the benefits and the significance of cruciferous vegetables in autoimmune health management and even cancer prevention and like their role in immune system modulation combined with their antioxidant and gut health properties like highlights the importance of these vegetables in a well-balanced diet. So here are some like examples of ways we can like incorporate them in our diet. So um, like yeah, salads, soups, smoothies, like steamed or sauteed. So th there are various ways. There's just a few. And also we know we can do like stews or curries. And, um, and it's just eating them in, in different forms. And um, and these can always be very delicious. And now just to wrap up with um, tonight's talk. So like while there might necessarily be like one dietary cure for autoimmune diseases, like in incorporating dark leafy greens and cruciferous vegetables into your diet, like can be a proactive step towards supporting your overall health and potentially managing like your condition. And just remember as consulting a healthcare provider is essential for personalized dietary recommendations and guidance. Um, for your specific and unique needs. And um, and like when Michael Greger, um, like he has an app called The Daily Dozen and that where he talks about basically like a dozen healthy things to do each day. And on that app, it, it does mention, it's like, it's dark leafy greens, like two servings a day and like one serving a day of cruciferous vegetables. So, um, so um, just wanted to end on that note. So just uh, thinking about how can we prioritize it in our diet or just start to include some more of it and um, the ways we can use our food um, for our health and with autoimmune management.